my strength this hour, Jesus. You're my deliverer, yes, you are, Jesus. The goodness of Jesus. I'm Vivian Brown. Thank you so very much for joining us today. Let's go ahead and open up with our prayer, and then we're going to jump right into God's word for today. Dear Heavenly Father, our Father, we thank you so very much for seeing fit in these trying times to allow us to see a new day. Father, we thank you for being so very merciful to us, Father, for sending your only begotten Son, Jesus. Father, we thank you for who you are and what you do in our lives each and every day. From the persecution of Christians to the uncontrollable spirits, Father, we need your mercy. From the White House to the U.S. Capitol, Father, we need your mercy. From the North Pole to the South Pole, Father, we need your mercy. Father, we love you and we thank you so very much for your mercy day in and day out. Father, for those that can hear, I ask that you give them a heart that is open to receive your words this day. Father, help me speak through me to your people to help someone to clearly understand how good you are, Father, to clearly understand how you see fit to allow your mercy to wrap itself around us each and every day. Father, we love you. We adore you. And again, we thank you for sending your only begotten son, Jesus. It is in your darling son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have found myself standing before a jury. And it doesn't look good. Lord, have mercy on me. I lost my job. And you know I have a family to take care of. Lord, have mercy on me. I committed adultery with someone and I just found out they have HIV. Lord, have mercy on me. I went to have my thyroid checked and now they want to take it out because it looks like it could be cancerous. Lord, have mercy on me. I was arguing with my wife and things escalated out of control. I didn't mean it, Lord. Please have mercy on me. The test says positive. Please, Lord, have mercy on me. See how easily we can find ourselves in devastating positions where we need God's mercy. We seem to find ourselves in situations where we need God and no one else but Him. No one, nothing else matters at that moment but God's mercy. Now think back to a time when you had an opportunity to be merciful towards someone else, but you didn't. Let's go ahead and jump into scripture for today because we want to find out what Jesus has to say about um, being merciful, about mercy, period. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Luke chapter 6, verse 36. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. James Chapter 2, verse 13, it reads, For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the story Jesus shared about the parable of the unforgiving servant. Jesus is speaking in chapter 18, verses 23 through 35. 
Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had to be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. Then Jesus said, This is how my heavenly Father would treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. That story is very, very powerful. Um, it lets me know that Jesus knew we would have a problem with being merciful. He knew we would have a problem with unforgiveness, but he did not bite his tongue in letting us know how his father felt about unforgiveness. We have no choice. We have to forgive. Now, someone may be saying that there are people that just don't deserve mercy. It could be a spouse. Um, it could be a spouse that hurt you dearly. I clearly understand. And you may feel they just don't deserve my mercy. Well, I hate to say this, but do we really deserve God's mercy every day? Think about that. Uh, you may say my, my husband or my wife cheated. Um, so, yes, I have unforgiveness, Vivian. Yes, I, I don't show mercy towards them. And yes, I divorce them. Well, divorce rates are out of control for that very reason. Unforgiveness and us not being able to show mercy. Of course, sometimes unforgiveness and mercy goes hand in hand. It could be maybe a family member. Someone could have um, loaned someone money and they never paid you back and you have unforgiveness. We are in the midst of the holiday season right now and some of our unforgiveness um, keeps us from going home to visit family members that we hadn't seen in years. Right back to verse 35. It says, This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. But I want you to think about how often God seems to bless us with his mercy day in and day out. So how can we not show mercy towards others? Okay, we say that they don't deserve your, our mercy. Well, God says that he, we don't deserve his mercy either. We sin all the time, but yet and still, he finds a way to wrap his mercy around us each and every day. Think about how we hurt God. Think about how he shows us his love. He gives his love to us. And instead of us giving our love back to him, we give our love to the world and all the world has to offer. Think about that. Think about how um, he blesses us by paying our bills and several of us are out of debt 
and we find ourselves mismanaging our money and getting right back in debt again. How do you think that hurts him? Last but not least, think about how he has blessed us with a measure of faith and we still refuse to believe in our situations to be healed. We refuse to believe in our situations to forgive and we refuse to believe in our situations to where everything is going to be all right. Let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 and 5. It reads, but God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. And 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his mercy, his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What a blessing it is to be a child of God, the Most High. What a blessing it is to be smiled upon by God himself. What a blessing it is to receive God's ultimate sacrifice, Jesus dying on a cross for us. As Christians, we should never go a day without praising God for his mercy. We should never go a day without being merciful. God's been too good for us. And I leave you with this. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. His mercies never, and I mean never, comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. For we thank God for sending his only begotten son, Jesus. Whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Until next time, get to know the man they call Jesus and be blessed. Ooh, oh.